Hello everybody. So this is going to be uh, owl carving. This is a piece of uh, old cedar, which means first growth. It's 17 inches wide. It's 2 feet 4 inches tall. So my friend's, uh, one of my best friend's dad, well my best friend from kindergarten school came here with his dad yesterday. Hi Mr. Wilkes. He's probably going to watch this video. And he really likes that owl back there that... Uh, me, Ryan, and Uncle Kevin carved. And so Tyler's gonna buy him a owl for Father's Day from me. So I'm recording through a Wi-Fi microphone right now. I'm not too sure how good it's gonna work. Might have to do a voiceover. But um, first of all, you look at your piece of wood. Yeah, so when you got dark stains like this, Sometimes that's an indicator that there's a nail in there. It's got some iron in there. This piece here, I'm not too sure how far the rot goes, but I'm gonna pull out my, uh, uh, what is it, my, my, I'm gonna pull out my bigger, one of my bigger chainsaws, my medium sized saw, cut this, see if this, get rid of this rot. Because it can't get rid of it, I gotta slice it all the way down and get rid of this whole piece. Okay, okay. I don't want to sharpen my bigger saw right now, so I'm going to slice at it with this 201. This is a professional saw, arborist saw. Usually it's a top handle, but you can order the rear handle. It has, uh, I think it is a 14 inch cannon bar on here, quarter tip. So let's see if I, holy, listen to that truck. Let's slice this off. Okay, my microphone wasn't working, so here's a voiceover. Number one, how did I miss that spike? That's it's just me being lazy, not going over the log before I, I uh, started carving it. So I don't know what I'm talking about here, but I just still can't believe how I missed that, and I hit it with my brand new chain. So I'm gonna try and get the um, spike out now. Yep. Get anything right today. Ah! Got it. <laughs> ah, ah. Okay, so I just sharpened my old three, my old three four. Shut up! I just sharpened my old three four um, chainsaw. It's got, I think, it's a 20, 20 inch cannon bar tuny tip. So that's what I'm going to do the rest of the rest of the blocking out with. Uh, here I got my metal detector. Very good to have. This is like forty dollars on Amazon. Just to double check, make sure there's no spikes there. Because there's a good chance that spikes... Oh, what's this? Maybe that's... I think that's hitting the bottom there. I don't think there's a spike there. Yeah, see? That's hitting the... This is a metal plate there! Just having one of those days I shouldn't even be filming today, but I promised Tyler that I'd film this. So I'm just gonna keep filming. Okay, so we got no more spikes in there. So now let's figure out how we're gonna carve this owl on. Turn this off. So, 
Uh, Got to find a pen. So, let's see here. Some of the owls I've done uh, lately, their heads have been a little bit small. So I want to try and improve and give this owl like a bigger, bulkier head. So let's see here. Can I do this? So that will be his head. I know it's already cut there. Weird, but that's okay. I'll figure all that out. So, you kind of see that? So his head will be here. And then his wings, right here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to start cutting. Okay, so this really isn't the tutorial how to carve an owl, but I'm going to say on the thumbnail how to carve an owl with a chainsaw. Basically, you know, when you're, when you're carving the owl with the chainsaw, you just want to block it out so you got the shape of an owl. You know, owls are total, total fantasy. Your owl can look like, you, you know, if you go to the dollar store and you look at those little tin things that they make for people's yards, owls, are, can, they can look silly, they can look cool, they can look mad, they can look like whatever you want them to look like. So, it, as long as you get the basic shape of an owl before you start doing detail, then you're off to a good start because... Once you start doing detail, you don't want to have to try and work on the shape of the owl. So, what am I saying here? Get a good shape for your owl first, like an owl shape. Then start doing the details. Smooth it all out. Make sure you're happy with it. Because once you start doing the details and, you, and you're not happy with the shape, well, then you're going to waste your time doing details. And then you're going to have to go back to, to recutting the shape. If that makes any sense to you so I don't know what I got going on here but um, so there you can see that's gonna be kind of like his chest to the left there um, I was too frustrated at this point to hook up the microphone and I don't know if it's on or off and um, it was just it was just one of those days we all get them and um, <clears throat> yeah so there I am cutting there I'm doing a plunge cut so this owl is going to be looking over its wing, like Ryan Cook says on his videos. It's good to make the owl looking over one of the wings, because if you make an owl straight on and the wings are at the side, then you don't see the details that you put into the wings, right? So if you make your owl look over one of the wings, the left wing or the right wing, then you can spend some time putting detail in the wings and people can um, enjoy it more. And I wouldn't worry about trying to get the wings for the beginners the same on both sides, because, well... Or you can look at the owl. You can only look at one side at a time, right? Unless you look at the center where the two wings are. I try and make them the same height. But um, just work on getting the shape first, and it, and it will take you. Uh, it, will, it will be a lot better for you. So here, here I'm doing. I'm just blocking it out. You know, I got my uh, chainsaw pants on, my normal glasses. I use those as safety glasses. I need to get some new ones because these are all scratched up to hell. I need to get a new phone because I film on my phone and my normal microphone screwed up. So, and safety pants. I got chainsaw pants on. I got steel toe boots on. I don't wear gloves because I get better control, a better grip with the chainsaw when uh, I'm using my own hands. And ear protection, earplugs, because, you know, chainsaws are loud, and sooner or later, it's going to affect your hearing. So, safety pants, chaps, safety pants or chaps, chainsaw carving stuff, steel toe shoes, in case you, your saw slips, you don't want to hit your toes, um, safety glasses, earplugs, and gloves if you, if you want. So, there you see, I'm kind of just rounding it off. This will be the wing, and you'll see his face will look over, overlook that wing. Just kind of visualizing it, having a look at it, taking my time. I'm trying to do a good job here on this owl. Not, it's just, it's a special one, so I got it on that uh, lift stand that I got from Canadian Tire here in Canada. 
think it was, it holds up to like 500 pounds, 600 pounds, and uh, it's great back saver. It's a hydraulic lift. So there I'm drawing on the um, the wing for the backside or the chest. Doesn't matter if you have small wings, big wings. You could have a big chest, small chest. Just uh. And when I'm editing this video, I realize that I got to stop eating uh, ice cream because I'm a little bit fat right now. But it's okay. It's, we'll call it the winter fat. So now summer's here. So now it's time to burn it off. I got some big projects I got to do. I also want to work on that um, that uh, lo half lo cedar log that I got that's six foot tall and it's going to be a waterfall. That's a project I want to do for myself. And... Um, I'm not too sure if I'm going to cement where the water is going to come down or if I can just leave it wood. I've been looking into that uh, rubber spray stuff. You know the stuff they use for gutters? You can get that stuff clear too. What's it called? Rubber flex or something? There's those commercials on TV. But I got a can ordered so I'll be able to test it out. Excuse me. I did do a smaller carving uh, of a little waterfall with a wood spirit. But that uh, carving's going to have like crazy wood spirits all over it maybe even a couple little ghost skulls i don't know i'm just gonna it's gonna be a piece for myself but it's gonna be a big job the biggest part of that job is to get the water to flow so when the up higher is gonna have to be pushed back so it comes down on a slope i just don't want it straight up and down where the water comes because then the water hits a bump it could fly off right you don't want the you don't want to have to fill up your waterfall thing, your water fountain, like five times a day, right? Just like the little water fountain I have out front of my house, I made it so if the water splashes, it stays inside the, where the water's coming down. So that's the biggest, I think that will be the biggest, um, the hardest part for me to do is with that waterfall is to get the water to, so it's going to be on like a degrees. So up higher is going to be cut back more and it's going to be like a slow hill and um, I'm just processing how I'm going to make the bucket at the bottom because you got to have water sit in the bucket so that's why I'm trying that rubber stuff maybe I can seal the wood with that so there you can see the shape of the owls kind of coming along <clears throat> I haven't carved too many owls maybe 10 20 but they're fairly simple to do for the new carvers and once you get the hang of it it's just you're it's just like kind of like the bear cuts i'm not saying bears are simple to do i'm not saying owls are simple to do but it's once you get the main cuts down then you can make it whatever you want to make it kind of owl uh, i'm just trying to kill time here too can you tell <laughs> but um you can see the shape of owl there Kind of cleaning up the head a bit, making the, the two sides of the face square. I love that 034 saw. That's probably my, besides my 2511 echo saw, that's probably my, well, my 500i fuel injected is my favorite saw. But this uh, 034, that's an older steel saw. I love it. Yeah, it's got some power. Sorry everybody, this isn't the best tutorial video, but how can I really do a tutorial video when I don't even know what I'm doing? You know? So. Whew, okay, I think we're almost at the end of this. Number two, voiceover. But you can see the shape of the owl going. Just using the tip of the bar there just to get some stuff, wood out of there, I guess you could say. Owl chainsaw carving. Okay, you can see there how I got most of my blocking done out. Everything's kind of rounded. I did the wedge cuts for the, because you, you don't want to have a flat faced owl unless you want to do like a barn owl. But when you do a wedge cut like this, try and get these the same pitch and the same length. These ones aren't perfect, but I'll make them work. When you draw your beak on, then we'll get to that after. But here's the wing. This guy's going to have a big chest. Um, I'm not the best. And carving in the legs so maybe what I'll do to carve in legs well I'll just figure it out and get that done I don't want to sh say how I'll do it but I'll just make a cut here and a cut there and then put a leg in there 
I might, I might, I might have already made a mistake. They made it come out like there, but you don't have to have legs. You can just carve some talons in down here, and that's good enough. So now I guess I'll start uh, pull out the little MS. Uh, uh, it's been a while since I've done this chainsaw carving filming, so I forget what I say. The little um, echo. 2511 or is it 2411? Echo CS 2511. Start carving out these wings and shaping it a bit better. Yep. Okay, so I got the little 2511 out because I was happy with the shake. So there you can see the shape of the owl. There you can see I'm cutting his wing in. I did cut it in shallow at the bottom because I got to remember I got to try and cut those legs in. It's going to be like a sitting owl with his legs kind of bent at the knees not standing so just take your time try and get the shape correct right this is still blocking out we're not we're not, we're not talking about details yet but i even had problems after um i hit that uh metal rod i have problems with this little saw you're gonna see but it's just you have to kind of just keep on going and don't let things get to you right and, uh, you know, you might get distracted, you might get bothered and might not like something that happened or something that's happening with your carving. But just who cares? Just forget about it. Fix what you need to fix and move on. And sooner or later, you'll forget that you had that problem. That's why I carve. Carving solves problems. That's Art solves problems for me. When I'm, when I'm carving, I don't think about any other bullshit. I just carve. I'm concentrating on the carving. And I love it. So there you can see the wing. I could have pushed that wing back a little bit, make the chest stick out a little bit more. But I, my main intention for this carving was to give a, the owl like a nice big kind of solid head. Because my, like I said earlier, some of my earlier owls that I did, the, look how fat I am there. Some of the owls I did are, uh, the heads are too skinny, but it's okay. They still look like owls. People still bought them. But yeah, I got to stop drinking. Uh, I think I'll start putting milk in my coffee instead of cream now. And um, I guess I'll have to go back to start buying skim milk again too. I've been drinking 2%. I don't know. I've seen this girl a couple of times and her family owns a dairy farm. And she told me that actually 2% milk is better than skim milk. And I'm like, but isn't it fattening? More fattening? And she's like, well, not really. It's better for you than the skim milk. I don't know, I've always drank skim milk so much because I drink so much milk. I think if I drank 2% milk, I'm going to get too fat. Well, there's the answer right there. Look at my belly. I haven't been eating that many donuts. But I've been eating, eating lots of ice cream. I just got my wisdom, uh, not wisdom tooth, but one of my back molar, molar's tooth taken out. And that happens to be there's the grocery store right, right beside the dentist. So I went and bought two boxes of popsicles like one box of fudgicles and the other box of creamsicles so that's not I said screw that that was the worst thing dealing with that pain the man i've i've had tooth pull pulled before and root canals done but that back top molar was friggin brutal watch this boom look at that holy shit so look here that uh, if you want to Go back a little bit, you'll see the chain flew off, the drive link snapped, but that's okay. It happens, man. That's why I suggest wear your safety gear. You don't know where that chain's going to fly off to. I'm lucky it flew straight out. This is, so it was, I was sad when I broke that chain because that was the last of the organ chain that I got from Ryan and it cuts really good. Um, this chain, I think, is the Steel R RMS 13 chain. It's 50 gauge quarter pitch. But uh, Steven, Steven Kanzora suggested this chain to me. But I think once I get it on the saw, I realize it's a knockoff chain that I got. Like a not a very good quality chain. Okay, so let's hope this mic works. Uh, sometimes it's just a cheap Amazon mic I paid 40 bucks for. I'm going to have to get a better mic sooner or later. Um, so this is the time when you got your bar off. You want to inspect your bar. I got these little brad nails. I'm just going to scrape out all the gunk in there. You don't, you don't want to have gunk in there, right? clean it you uh you feel the edge and if your fingernail can catch on the edge of the bar just get a file 
Some people say, no, don't file this way, file it that way, don't file it this way. Well, I file whatever way I want to file. So, I just get rid of that edge. Some people are like, if you file it this way, your burr's going to overlap and then yada yada. I don't care. I just get shit done. You can file the edge a bit too if you want, so that's good. Get your air compressor. Okay, just blow it out, blow out the... Blow out the channel. Blow out your oiler holes. Okay, now you might as well clean your saw at the same time. Then you put your blur back on and you start curving. That's all. Okay, one more thing I might add if you put a new chain on your bar. Put your chain on a little bit tight, right? Start your saw, give it some good revs because your chain's going to stretch. Let your train, chain stretch whatever it's going to do. Stop, tighten it up to the proper uh, adjustment that you'll want to get it. Uh, whatever. Fuck. Perfect. Okay, hope the mic's working. So look at this nice big black stain from that spike. You can still see a hole there. I think it's neat. It just gives it a uh, pretty cool effect once you put the finish on it. So. I've been having problems today, you know, I forget, first of all I hit a spike, then my chain fell off, then I had a problem with the, this new chain that I got, I don't think it's the chain I got from Ryan, I don't think it's the organ chain, I don't think it's the uh, steel chain, I think it's that knockoff chain stuff that I got, And uh, but anyways it's carrying on, so I did manage to get some knees in there, so you see he's sitting, so here's his kneecap, and then you just push his legs back there, so see that see always and then you'll put a little slice there to make it look like his feet, feet are there yeah i know they look like chicken feet right now but i'll carve talons in here later um so i got this cut like ryan cook carving great friend of mine and a great inspiration he is very good at carving owls he has lots of videos tutorials how to carve owls i watched two of his videos last night so i can try and figure out how to make the heads bigger for my owls I'm not trying to make my owls look like Ryan's owls. I'm trying to make my owls look like my own owls, but using tips from Ryan, because he's a pro, and he's done thousands of them. He knows what's going on. I don't really know what's going on. So, go like this. This will be our eye socket. And like Ryan says, make them same on both sides. Try and make them equal as you can. Look from one side to the other. And uh, mine are totally unequal, that's okay. Because I just, I just fuck shit up, pardon my language. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here, then remove the wood. I'm going to cut true to the line here. Actually, I'm going to cut it in a bevel, pretend my hand's my chainsaw. But I'm going to cut like this. Then I'm going to remove the wood to make this pop out. Then also, here, up here. Let's give them some little wings. So I'm going to cut... This kind of be like sort of like a great horned owl. I don't know. But I'm going to cut here true to the line. Then I'm going to remove the wood in here. I guess so.
Okay, so this is the Makita die grinder. It's the uh, 800C. I consider myself a very lucky man. I am going to be making another video probably next week on just die grinders themselves. And um, you guys will see why I'm lucky. But uh, there's a speed control. But I suggest this die grinder to anybody. It's just freaking rips. looks like it's on so as long as you for the very beginning carver or be very beginning whatever you do as long as you put your mind to it and overcome all the, the sorry for my language bullshit you will overcome you will overcome your problems I've been dealt bullshit my whole life and I've, I'm still here I'm still here mr. Wilkes will tell you hi mrs. Wilkes if you're watching this too his name's Wayne Wilkes but I'm just old school. I call him Mr. and Mrs. Wilkes. But he'll tell you that I was troubled little. I'm not going to get into it. But he'll tell you I was a troubled little kid. But I've always had a heart of gold. Anyways, let's. Uh, makes me real happy to make this for you, Mr. Wilkes. You and uh, Mrs. Wilkes are always a special uh, parents. Like second parents I had growing up. Um, Joey's mom, Joey Cavanaugh's mom was too, Mrs. Cavanaugh, Mr. Cavanaugh, and the Burnsides, Greg Burnside, Gordy Burnside, all there, Mrs. Burnside and Mr. Burnside are always, you guys have always been the three special families to me. But anyways, so just overcome. I know that this is still damp, it's not, it's not bad, but I'm done for today, it's raining, I don't know how this rain's going to pick up on this piece of shit mic, but I can see here I got some, I got to fix up the eyes a bit, make them look more equal. And whatever, it is what it is. I did this, the, the base nicer for Mr. Wilkes. And you know, when you're, when you're also another thing too, like carving's not just about making money for me. I'll say that much, very much right now. I don't really care. But when you're making for something for somebody special, try a little bit harder, you know, put, put a little bit more effort into it. So I guess I should stop babbling now because I probably don't make sense. But let's give you a full 360, this owl. So you can see like this one's more, this side is more, this side's more round. I don't know. I'll fix it another day. There's his beak. Okay. There's that line from that nail, the spike, the black. I think it's the iron or whatever is inside of it to makes a wood turn color. Here's his talons. I'll carve his talons in when the cedar dries a bit in a couple days. Um, there's the hole. So there's his legs. And here's the back. And here's the texture. I like this texture up here. Ryan Cook taught me that. I'm not the, like I say, I'll say in the voiceover, I'm not very good at textures. I'm still learning. But I'll learn on my on my own. And I'll finally find something that works for me. This looks pretty good to me. Once you burn it and sand it, you're going to get nice textures there. But you'll see like a cut line here. I still got to get my die grinder and get rid of that cut line and stuff. And all the swirls on the base. So there's the back of it. So look, it's a big head owl. <laughs> it's a big headed owl. He doesn't really have a tail. He has a little bit of a tail. Don't care. Just don't care. All right. So let's leave it there. And uh, hope you like your hooter so far, Mr. Wilkes. We'll do another video if everybody says I should do another video on doing the details, burning it, and putting the spire thing on it. Then the color is really going to pop. See y'all later. Car Fusion. Over and out. Hope this mic works.
Okay, so if you made it this far in the video, here's me detailing the wings. And I'll show you how I do the uh, detailing of the feather pattern, like the fur pattern on the chest and the back. It's just kind of like it's, it's, I'm not a pro at it. I'm still kind of trying to learn my own technique. But it's kind of, I think, the way Ryan Cook taught me how to do the textures. Just quick, like little X's for the feathers, not the wings. But anyways, it's real time carving. If you want to watch it, watch it. If you don't, you don't. Hope you're all doing good. And the more you do, the better you're going to get. So for all the pros out there that are sitting there saying, no, no, buddy, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> How can I be doing it wrong when I'm doing it the way I want to do it? How can that be wrong? Can you answer that question for me? Later. Okay, so I'm not really not a fan of this uh, Wi-Fi microphone. See, here it is. It's just a pain in the ass to turn it on and off when I want to listen to music and stuff, so I'm going to have to figure something out. Oh, well, actually, for the person that um, sent me a message on one of my videos and said that I'm trying to be just like Ryan Cook and copy things that he does and try to invent my own words and stuff like that, I just actually ordered those uh, ISO tunes that he made a video for because, well, I trust his judgment, so yeah. I got the same, I'm going to have the same uh, ISO tune earbuds as Ryan. Yep. So let's take a look at this thing here. You know, this 
day it's kind of been a nightmare for me you see the chain i hit a big friggin' steel thing the the big nail spike my chain fell off and then my chain wouldn't it was a stupid chain i had on that bar and it, it's just been a friggin' nightmare but anyways you got to keep on carrying on right so what how have i progressed today well i carved legs in there they're not like uncle the legs that uh, ryan and uncle kevin taught me well maybe they are a bit yeah, I guess they kind of are. <laughs> if you guys, I have a video, uh, Uncle Kevin and Ryan showing me how to carve this owl uh, way a couple years ago. And um, here's, I don't know if you can see the back of it, but I think it's going all right. So what did I learn today? I learned how to cut legs in. I could cut right through there. I'm not going to. Um, I will clean all up that up so they're more equal with a die grinder. I still got to carve his talons in and um, do some cleaning up with the die grinder on the head. And another thing I learned today, I carved a bigger owl head so they're not so like alien likes like little freaky freaky owl owls. Okay, I'm gonna like like little freaky freaky freaks like little freaky freaky freaks like little freaky freaky owls.